Hi everyone, it's Veronique and today I'm going to talk to you about giving your opinion. I know, sometimes it is really nice to get an argument or we find a subject that really touches us and we really want to give our opinion. Just be aware to use good arguments and not fall into using fallacies. What is a fallacy? It is a failure in reasoning which renders an argument invalid. Many fallacies can be found in everyday conversation. Today, I'm going to concentrate on manipulating argument. This fallacy is used when we try to manipulate the idea of other people by using a wrong argument. Do you know that it's very easy to manipulate people? We are going to analyze three different types of manipulating content. The first one that we're going to analyze is the false dilemma. The second one will be the slippery slope. And we are going to finish by the Bayes generalization. False dilemma. Black or white. The false dilemma is used when somebody would present only two options about a situation. For example, they would say that if A happen, well, B is certainly going to happen. However, there is a lot of options between these two extremes. False dilemmas are usually characterized by this and that but we can also characterize them by omission of choices. The most common false dilemma that I'm sure you already heard would be America, love it or leave it. You are my friend or my enemy. If you are not going to heaven, you probably go you know where. All of these examples just present you only two options of a situation. However, we all know that there are many more options available. America, love it or leave it? Maybe you can love this country or not, but you still want to stay in? If you're not going to paradise, where are you going? Is it sure that you are going with Lucifer? A very popular example of false dilemma has been made by George W. Bush, the ex-president of United States. After 9-1-1, George W. Bush started a campaign against terrorism and he wanted some countries to support his idea. He started to say, every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Are you really with America? And if you are not, you are with the terrorists? Are there only these two options available in this situation? This is a real false dilemma. Maybe some countries do not want to participate into a war and they just want to support America, but they won't send any soldiers to war. By using this false dilemma, George W. Bush has been manipulating the public ideas and many people started to think that if a country was not with the United States in this war, they were for terrorism. When fallacies are used as real arguments, People cannot see clearly the real situation. This fallacy has been used a lot, especially in the Bible when Jesus has said, are you with me or against me? So this was about the false dilemma. We are now going to talk about the slippery slope. What is this? The slippery slope is a fallacy in which the person sustains that some event must inevitably follow from another without any inevitability for the event in question. If event A has occurred or might occur, therefore event B is going to happen. This sort of reasoning is a fallacy because there is no reason to believe that one event must inevitably follow from another one without any argument for such a claim. This is especially clear in cases in which there is a significant number of steps or graduation between the two events. This is also a fallacy that is very popular and people will use it without even knowing they are making a mistake. For example, my mom would say, we need to stop to increase university fees. Why? because the next thing you'll know, they will be charging $40,000 per semester and then students won't have enough money and everybody will be poor. That's it. This is assuming 
that we need to stop to increase the fees right now because if the fees are increasing inevitably it's sure that the fees are going to increase that much students won't have money and it's sure that everybody is going to be poor at the end so stop to increase fee nobody is going to be poor this fallacy is often used with delicate subjects such as abortion and same-sex wedding a true example has been used in canada with our ex-prime minister. In January 2005, Stephen Harper was not prime minister. He was the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition and he made a slippery slope. He said, and I quote, as soon as they've got to attack one traditional idea, the next one is down the road. I don't want to get into the polygamy debate, but I fear if we do this, the next thing on the liberal agenda will be polygamy and who knows what else. Here, Stephen Harper just assumed that if the Liberal Party of Canada would accept same-sex marriage, it is obvious that now we are going to accept polygamy and we don't want to know what else. This is sure. It's inevitably. This slippery slope totally manipulates the public ideas because he is telling everybody that if we start thinking about the same-sex marriage question, it is sure that we are going to think about all the other traditional ideas. This is a false argument, this is a total manipulation, and we call it the slippery slope. My last subject is called the Bayes generalization. This fallacy is committed when a person draws a conclusion about a population based on a sample that is biased or partisan in some manners. People often commit biased generalization because of some prejudice. A person might intentionally or unintentionally seek out people or events that will support his idea. People also often commit this fallacy because of laziness. It is very easy to simply take a sample from what happens to be easily available rather than taking the time and the effort to generate an adequate sample and draw a justified conclusion. So sample S, that is biased, is taken from population P. Conclusion C is drawn about population P, who is based on sample S. We understand that because the sample was based, conclusion C is not true. I will now tell you a personal story about this fallacy, which happened really recently into my family. I won't say the name of who have done this fallacy, because I think that when she's gonna watch this video, she's not gonna really appreciate. But I hope that if she recognizes herself, she will try to improve her argument next time. Quebec's government wants to upgrade the number of migrants in the province. It made a real provincial debate. In this debate, I have to admit, we've seen a lot and a lot of biased generalization, most of the time because of laziness. One of the members of my family wanted to know the opinion of Quebec residents. She once arrived to my place telling me that this is a really bad idea of the government. She is showing me as an argument a newspaper of her hometown saying that 70% of people from this town is against increasing the number of migrants in the province. So she concludes that 70% of the people of Quebec are against increasing the number of migrants in the province. That's it. Easy like this. This is a total biased generalization. Because she only used her hometown as a sample and she extended to all the Quebec cities. We need to know that she comes from a very small town in which there are no immigrant people. So her conclusion drawn about Quebec's population based on a sample of her hometown is totally false. If we take a look at surveys who have been done in Montreal, we can see the total opposite. 80% of Montreal's residents, or 
in favor of increasing the number of migrants into the city. So, in this situation, it is obvious that the first conclusion is a mistake. Also, saying that 80% of Quebec population is ready for more immigration would also be a mistake. To do a great survey, we would need to take different people from all the cities in the province which will represent the population of Quebec and then we could make good conclusions if we want to talk about Quebec population. These were the three fallacies I wanted to show you today. These three fallacies are used for manipulating the public's opinion and I hope that from now on you would be able to notice them. I now want to hear your stories. Are your parents using some fallacies to convince you to do some stuff? Do you? If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button above. Thank you, see you next week.